In this video, what I'm going to be talking about is a vertical leap lab that figures out your maximum vertical height experimentally and finding the initial velocity and total time in the air with your experimental values. So if you were to run some kind of experiment like this, you would have a person jumping vertically and they're not going to bend their knees upwards because that's going to skew the height and make it a little bit too large. You're actually going to jump as high as you can and then try to keep your knees unbent. And then where the bottom of your feet are would be your maximum vertical leap. So you would either one have someone just like try to spot it from eye level or take a slow motion video of it to spot the distance the best you can. So you would maybe spot something like this 27 centimeters on a meter stick, which you could probably tape against the wall um, so that it just stands vertically in the background right by the person. Now that would mean that their delta Y is 0 0.27 meters once you convert that because there's 100 centimeters in a meter. If you uh, divide 27 by 100, you get 0.27. In addition to that, we know that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we just assume that someone is reaching their maximum height, once they reach their maximum height, they have, to have an instantaneous velocity of 0 meters per second at the peak of their flight. Now, um, using those numbers, what we can do is we can find the initial velocity of the person. And the way we can do that is we can use this formula right over here, which is V squared equals VI squared um, plus two A delta Y. So let's go ahead and plug in our values into that formula and see what we get for our VI. So we plug those in numbers in and basically got the product of these three numbers, which gave us negative 5.292 added to both sides, square root of both sides. And that gave us 2.3 meters per second. So that is their takeoff speed um, off the ground that they're, um, they're taking off with. So um, from there, we can find a bunch of different things. Now, if we know that the person leaves the ground at 2.3 meters per second, then as they rise and fall, they're going to return back to the ground at negative 2.3 meters per second because they're going downward. So we can use that to our advantage. And if we want to go ahead and solve for the total time, we could do it one of two ways. We could either start from the beginning to the peak, which would be from the 2.3 to the zero. And then we can double our time because that's only the time of the rise. And then we can double it to get the time of the fall. Um, or we could use this vi of 2.3 and the vf of negative 2.3 and then that would go from the very beginning to the very end so that's the method i'm going to use i'm going to use a vi of 2.3 meters per second the vf of negative 2.30 and then the acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared as usual and then i'm going to plug it in to this formula and then see what we get for our total time All right, so after we did negative 2.3 minus 2.3, we got to negative 4.6, and then you could cross multiply the negative 9.8 and the T. And then once you divide the negative 4.6 by the negative 9.8, you get 0.47 seconds, which is a very small number, which is actually pretty normal. So the highest hang times for a human are around one second. So anything that is approaching one second is exceptionally high. So 0.47 seconds is a pretty average um, maximum height for a vertical leap and a pretty um, average time would be somewhere like around half a second. But as I said, if you're approaching something around 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or one, that is very exceptional. Okay, so to sum things up, um, if you're doing this vertical leap, 
um, you're going to want to take your distance off the ground with a straight knee and then do a slow motion capture, take some averages, do whatever you can to get the best delta y that you can, plug that into a formula over here. Remember, zero meters per second is your final velocity because that is your instantaneous velocity at the very top. You can use that to find your vi. And then once you have your vi, you're pretty good from there to solve for anything else. Um, because you know that your VF returning to the ground is negative 2.3. You can use that to your advantage, plug it into this orange formula right over here, and then you can get your total time of 0.47 seconds. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.